The former press secretary for Vice President Mike Pence, the vice president features prominently in NBC's explosive report on Rex Tillerson. According to multiple sources, it was the vice president who acted as the adult in the room trying to ease tensions between the secretary of state and President Trump. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's my understanding that the vice president plays this role often, translating Donald Trump to his former colleagues in the House, translating Donald Trump in this instance to another cabinet secretary. Well, the vice president meets with the cabinet secretaries and other senior advisors on a regular basis. Yeah, he's, he plays a big role in the policy and in the communications and messaging role for the president. But is, but is part of that role absorbing frustration with the president? I mean, there, there is solid reporting that no one has denied that the president made brought Jeff Sessions to near tears in the way that he lambasted him over accusing himself. There's solid reporting that no one in the White House, any of former colleagues, refuted that John Kelly was screamed at in a manner that he'd never been screamed at in his career. Does the vice president play a consoler in-house kind of role? Absolutely not. What the vice president does. No, people don't go to him. I mean, Sessions didn't go to him. What he does is he helps to, to make sure that our cabinet secretaries know how to operate in the framework that, that moves the president's message forward. What does that mean, the framework? Forward. You mean with a tweeting president? What's the framework? In terms of making sure you're communicating, making sure you're working through the proper channels to make sure that when you're out there speaking on behalf of the administration, that you're actually echoing the message of the president. So it sounds like you're confirming the NBC report that he talked to Tillerson about being respectful in his on-air appearances. That I'm, I'm not going to confirm the contents of the conversation, but I will but say... you won't deny that after Tillerson sort of seemed to part ways with the president after his Charlottesville response, he said the president speaks for himself. Did Pence talk to him about that appearance? The, the vice president and the secretary of state did speak, and they did speak about the need to come together and make sure that, that everyone is moving forward with the message in the framework that is echoing what the president of the United States wants to have communicated. It's not, it's not, shouldn't be characterized as a pat talk. It shouldn't be characterized as... How would you, well, use your words. What's your word? I would say advise it. And I would say, how's that different from a pep talk? I mean, pep talk or woodshed, right? Those are basically the two choices. I'm not going to get into putting the definitions and where that was, but I think what you're seeing is from the president, the vice president, General Kelly on down, you're seeing that this president is he's result oriented. He, he wants results, and he wants them yesterday. And so when he gets the opportunity, and we have people out that need to be moving that ball forward in the, in the message, in the framework, in the plan that the, that the president is laying out, this is the way that you can so you keep bring things together. The framework. I've got a White House official who over the weekend described the, the framework, which is, I think, you're talking about processes. Is that what you're talking about? Systems, strategies, plans. For, but that's, that's what they describe as under the line, things that General Kelly can control. And then they put the president's tweets, the president's comments, the president's comportment with his own cabinet secretaries and other officials, the things he says to Russians when he talks about coming in that shop. They describe those things as above the line, out of the control of Pence, of General Kelly. How do you deal with that part of the framework? Well, I think at the end of the day, we've got to look at the fact that this is a president who communicates directly to the American people and directly around the world in, in, with the message and in the work that he chooses to use. You have you have a leader who is saying we're going to get results. And I just saw. But he doesn't few, have any results. I, I, results saw few, I just saw a Pew study that said that said. But let me just let me just understand what of, results you're talking the about. The coverage of President Trump has been about style. And that's what well, I'm asking you on substance. Results. Well, well, what not, results? Give me, a, give me one. ISIS is on the run. Record stock what market is, the is low, what low, is low the, unemployment. We've got jobs growing. What is the accomplishment that, that justifies the, the framework that, that includes happening. Pence having to take people to the woodshed, as Gene said? When they, I mean, do you think there's any honorable dissent from the president? Do you think that Rex Tillerson had the right, as you know, Whoopi Goldberg would say, as a grown-ass man, to disagree with how Donald Trump responded to Charlottesville? Well, what I would ask you is, how do you, how would you respond, and how did you respond when the Secretary of Treasury questioned your bosses, President George W. Bush's commitment to tax cuts? Nobody took him to the woodshed, and nobody. Well, what I'm saying to bring is, George, we, I mean, we actually, you actually, you want to bring the way operate, George Bush dealt with operate critics? Operate in a system where we have an agenda for the American people. The well, president was elected president on that. Tweets attacks at his own cabinet. Well, well no, we have we have people who are focusing more on style. We have we have a media. Who's seventy-five percent. What are you talking about? There was a Pew study. I love Pew, but what are you talking about? Who's focused on style? You have no led. Put style aside. If your style works for you, I say mm -hmm. tomato, Absolutely. you say tomato. But who, what is the result that you're pointing to? I'm, I'm pointing to many results. I'm talking about a rec record stock markets, low unemployment, ISIS on the run. Our enemies finally knowing that when, when the President of the United States and America says something, we actually mean it. We are not going to just turn around and turn the other cheek, and our allies know it. You know, I've had the privilege of traveling around the world with the Vice President uh, during my service with him, and each world leader that we met with. When the cameras went away, we had those private conversations. Yeah. You know those conversations I'm talking about are all saying, thank goodness that we know America finally has our back again. And that when we say we're going to go after terrorists, or when we say we're going to secure borders, when we say that we're going to deal with the scourge of drugs coming into our country, that we finally have a president who actually means what he says and is going to do it. Those are the kinds of things. And the American people are seeing that out there. They're seeing that beyond just the... 
tweet stories of the day and all of the other distractions or style issues where many in the media seem to be focused more on the style, but when they're actually looking at the results... And the I, I guess my point is, is we're not focused on the style because it's what we care about. The president started his day. You have to concede that, that yesterday was a deadly serious day. He was in Puerto Rico, the scene of a humanitarian crisis. Today, he's with grieving families and courageous first responders, yet he woke up focused on style. He woke up and tweeted three times about the media. So, so what is your point about, about the media focusing on stuff? The president himself is obsessed with his own press coverage and tweets about it. Well, but what I would also tell you is, is he is focused on getting those results. He's focused on getting the, re- the recovery going in, in Puerto Rico to going to Was Las Vegas and controlling people. Absolutely. I mean, there were people on the ground weeks before the storm hit, while the storm was there. This is a unique situation being on an island that we cannot have things just sitting outside the storm zone on a highway ready to roll in as soon as the storm moves away. I understand So there that. are many factors, but, and you had the back-to-back storms. But we're so, not two weeks in. Is it acceptable that 95% of the island is without power? There are many infrastructure issues there that just simply cannot be overcome in a matter of weeks. I mean, we go to Doha and set bases in the middle of the desert where we build cell towers and roads and power. I mean, it, and we're also building the cities that support those troops and those things in Doha. Right. You're actually dealing but with an existing infrastructure that was wiped out by two hurricanes. So why can't we go to the airport and just build a cell tower and build a... a All eight airports are reopened. 64 of 67 hospitals have reopened. We've got 50% of the population that has, drink, has clean drinking water again. There are steps, there are processes that have to go in place. We have to clear the road before we can actually get the supplies in. We have to make sure that we have those distribution hubs. And that's what you're seeing under the leadership of, of FEMA, under the leadership with, in partnership with the Department of Defense. And as, and as we know, it is a much different situation. What we saw in Texas, what we saw in Florida, was and had been said from the White House before the storms and during the recovery, that the federal government is there to assist local and state governments in areas where they can't and where they're overwhelmed. The entire area and the entire infrastructure of Puerto Rico was basically demolished. So we had to come in and reestablish all of that at a federal level where you had police, you had first responders that were didn't have homes. They were dealing with their own issues. We had to provide all of that as opposed to just assisting on top. We have great partners like in Puerto Rico. It seems like the kind of thing you could have seen coming down the pipe, but we'll, we'll pick up this conversation. I appreciate okay. being with us. So thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it.